you know. Sometimes people tell you they got a good horse and he's this and that and you get him and he's not always as good as they say he is, but this one was. He was every bit <clears throat> as good as they claimed and maybe even better. Timeline flashback of episode one to bring you back to date on the story. Late April in Southern California rolls around and Kavian Corona makes his career debut a successful one. All the high hopes of this expensive yearling resting on the outcome of this premiere, and those were not in vain. Fast forward to June, his first real test as KVN Corona is measured up against some of the finest two-year-olds on the West Coast for the Grade 1 Ed Burke Million Futurity Trial. Again, the son of Corona Cartel doesn't disappoint. Fast forward again to June 18th, as the finals of the Ed Burke Million were on tap at Los Alamitos, as jockey Ramon Sanchez rallied the great Colt in mid-pack to rouse an effort to bolt to the lead in the closing moments of the race to capture the great one, Ed Burke Million Futurity, in a time of 17.757 seconds. It was the first million dollar Futurity win for owner Keith Nellison, and he would be quoted as describing the joy of doing it with a homebred that he purchased back from the Riadosa sale as what an unbelievable feeling. In only the third start of his career, his earnings had eclipsed the $400,000 mark with nearly $2.5 million left in the year that the connections were steering towards. After winning the Grade 1 Ed Burke Million Futurity, trainer Paul Jones gave the Colt nearly a month break at his ranch in Temecula, California. With only brief discussions about the possibility of taking the horse to the mountain in Riadosa for the All-American Trials, but those thoughts quickly got back on track with the next target chosen as the Pacific Coast Quarter Horse Racing Association Breeders Futurity. The trials for the race would be contested two months from his return to training in mid-September at Los Alamitos. And away they go. KVN Corona started off beautifully to the extreme outside. Magnificent 7, extremely racy. He's now trying to rally on as well as KVN Corona is powerful out here in the lead. Down along the inside, Magnificent 7. But KVN Corona, the only thing that matters now is the clock because he crushes the field. But KVN Corona, very, very impressive. Improving his already unbeaten record to four career wins and four career starts, the grade one winner qualified into a second graded futurity in one of the most visually impressive races thus far, finishing as the fastest qualifier in a time of 17.694 seconds for the 350-yard event. Three weeks later, on October the 7th, 2017, at Los Alamitos Racecourse, trainer Paul Jones sent the Corona Cartel Colt postward in the $400,000 futurity. And away they go on the PCQHRA Breeders Futurity. The one who came away the best was Hard Headed Chick down the center part of the track. Comes just walked by to the extreme outside. Comes KVN Corona has just walked by. KVN Corona is now rallying on strongly. Here comes the Revenant from down along the inside. And the Revenant is flying to be in a very tight photo. I think KVN Corona just walked by the Revenant. A three way photo probably going to KVN Corona. An exciting finish here at the PCQHRA Breeders Futurity. Everybody can read the past performances on the horse. I mean, he ran the table out there as a two-year-old. Um, very, very impressive. He is a horse that wants to win. He's a horse that uh, uh, has the desire, doesn't want to run second, wants to beat him. He never was a horse that wanted to, to uh, just run off from him. You know, he just, uh, he just always was very professional. Did his job, went up there and got his picture taken. That was what he did. Yeah, we're super happy. I mean, this horse is just a little star, you know, and he continues to get his job done. You know, we had to come off of it a little bit tonight, and he had to work a little bit harder. But uh, Ramon did an excellent job riding him. He just didn't panic. He just let the horse do his running and got up to the wire. Obviously, you have to wait to see how the horse comes out of the race, but what's next? We're probably looking at uh, two million. We're probably uh, going to skip the Golden State, give him a little time, come back, have a really tough horse for the two million. Anytime you can win a grade one here, or you can win the Ed Burke with a horse, you know, they stack up pretty high. It takes a <clears throat> takes a good horse. And uh, then when you come back and win the Breeders' Fraternity, even though the Breeders' Fraternity, the purse is not as big as the Ed Burke, but the, the competition's probably just as tough. 
and it's a little later in the year, and, and, and the horses have kind of weeded down, and you're running against some of the horses that, that are just selective to run in that race. Um, so the Breeders' Fraternity is a tough fraternity, too. So to win two fraternities back-to-back -back and, and be undefeated at that point, you know, it takes a hell of a horse. And obviously, he, he is a hell of a horse. With over a half million dollars earned already in his two-year-old campaign, and always with a cult that has won multiple graded fraternities, including a grade one million dollar fraternity, you have the outlook of his potential stud career looming. And as it pertained to year-ending honors, KVN looked to be way ahead in the standings for Colts in his division. Well, after we won the Pacific Coast, the, the trials to the Golden State were only two weeks away from the finals of the Pacific Coast. So we felt it would be bringing him back awful quick. So we decided to skip the Golden State and then point to the two million. So we pointed to the two million and the Colt kind of colicked and had some trouble coming up uh, on the on the day of the trials of the two million. And things just weren't a hundred percent. Anyhow, he did get better and he was good enough to race. And away they go. And the one who came away the best was just walked by to the extreme outside. KVN Corona is now going to have to pick it up. He's trying to rally on as well. Seems even better. To the extreme outside comes King of Appeals. But the one they're going to have to beat is just walked by. KVN Corona is now beginning to close. And KVN Corona is coming after. Just walked by. And KVN Corona knows Bob would just walk by. Extremely close. And 21 Guns, the Revenant's going to be in a photo with Big Time Patriot and King of Appeals for the minor awards. Yeah, he got in, in, into some trouble, and, and he showed his talent and his, and his guts to come back and, and, and his will to win. You know, some horses, when when they learn how to win and they have that will to win, I mean, that's that's an important thing too. And he had that. You know, he 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 wanted to get to get to the lead. You know, and some of his races, you know, he didn't win all of them by a by a block, but he won them by enough where he got up there and got the job done. And and he had that will to win. Simply born to be a champion, the brilliant KVN Corona, the son of the legendary Corona Cartel, now standing set for 2019 at Lazy E Ranch. The full brother to grade one winner and sire, Big Lou, was a champion runner, winning the grade one Edbert Million in a gutsy performance for the ages over Low Sal 2 Million winner, Jay Fire Up. He also put in an amazing performance to get up in the closing strides to win the grade two Pacific Coast Quarter Horse Racing Association Breeders Futurity, ready to grab the torch of his legendary father and continue the Corona Cartel bloodline into the next generation of runners. The brilliant KVN Corona.